The Loud House is a show that's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. Well, okay, that's not strictly true. It's not the house itself that's loud. It's the people inside the house that are loud. A literal Loud House would just be terrifying. <laughs> After premiering on Nickelodeon last spring, The Loud House quickly became one of the network's most popular shows of 2016. And more and more people have been tuning in to watch the ever-growing misadventures of Lincoln Loud and his whopping ten sisters. But a show with this many characters and a premise this crazy must have some theories to go with it, right? So let's talk about the sole son of The Loud House, Lincoln. There's been one theory I've seen that has had more discussion than any other, with plenty of arguments both for and against it. And that theory asks, is it possible that Lincoln Loud was in fact adopted? So this theory has a couple of things to look into. First of all, Lincoln is the biggest odd one out of the Loud family for several reasons. Because of his fourth wall breaks that address the viewers, most of the time we're under the impression that he's a lot like us, an outside observer looking into the chaos of the Loud family. So why does he seem more self-aware of his family's antics than anyone else? And why does he seem to be the butt of a lot of the teasing that goes on in the family? Furthermore, when you look at all of the children in this family, every member seems to be built around a specific trait. For example, Lucy He's incredibly goth, Luna's incredibly punk, Lynn Jr.'s incredibly athletic, and so on. Meanwhile, how exactly would you describe Lincoln? I mean, yeah, you could say he's a total dweeb. Which I mean in the nicest way possible, because I'm a dweeb too. But his character doesn't seem to be built around one specific trait. He seems much more well-rounded. Could his uncertain role in the family dynamic be symbolic of the fact that he originally wasn't a member of the family? Besides, it's not like that's the only thing we have to go on, either. Lincoln is also the most unique looking of the Loud family. What with his white hair and bags under his eyes. And no one in his immediate family shows any signs of white hair other than Lincoln himself. When we combine this with the previously mentioned bags under his eyes, it becomes pretty fair to say that Lincoln looks radically different from his sisters. The only other one who looks really different would be Lucy, but she has so much of her face covered that it's hard to tell what she looks like anyway. But there's one last characteristic that separates Lincoln from his sisters that I've danced around for long enough. Lincoln is the only brother of the entire household. And this, while it's one of the cornerstones of the show's concept, has still got some fans scratching their heads. Some people have even questioned Lincoln's possible parentage because of this fact. This is based on the assumption that Lincoln must be some sort of genetic anomaly, since the Loud family's offspring is much more likely to be female, right? But as far as evidence goes for this theory, that's pretty much all there is to it. Lincoln seems like quite the outsider in his own family, he's the only brother, he looks radically different, and his personality seems to be built pretty differently than his sister's. So is there anything concrete that can back up this claim of Lincoln being adopted? One thing you may have noticed about this theory is that the evidence we've looked at doesn't really point to anything specific. They're more like general observations that are strange. But let's break this down piece by piece. And we'll start with Lincoln's most striking feature, his ghost white hair. As part of the Ask Lincoln portion of The Loud House's official Instagram, Lincoln said that he doesn't actually know why his hair is white. I like to think that his sisters have just been pranking him for years and like dyeing his hair in his sleep. And if that were the case, I'd put my money on either Luann or Lola being the prime suspect. Or Lisa. Or Lana. Or, you know what, all of the sisters would be prime suspects. But if this isn't the case, and that's a big if, there is one other person we could turn to for answers. In the episode Cover Girls, we see Lincoln's Pop Pop, who has the same hairstyle and color as Lincoln, which would imply that Lincoln may have actually inherited his white hair. However, that wouldn't explain why Lincoln's hair went white at such a young age. And there are a few theories that try to explain everything, so let's tackle these one at a time. Firstly, let's take a look at how human hair can even appear white, since this is pretty important info. For the most part, human hair's natural appearance actually is white. Well, actually it's clear, but the way light reflects off of it makes it look white. The reason there's such a variety in hair color is due to the distribution of the natural pigment melanin, which is actually what determines the hair's color, whether it's black or blonde or anything in between. When it comes to hair, the two most common types of melanin are eumelanin and pheomelanin. Eumelanin causes hair to be darker, which you may remember from such hits as brown or black, while pheomelanin causes hair to have more of a reddish tinge. Meanwhile, some people don't produce much of either type, which can result in lighter, blonder hair. And at an even further extreme, we have people who produce little to no melanin in their hair, which leads to gray or white hair, much like Lincoln. Melanin production also slows down with age, which is why so many people, when they get older, begin to go gray. So back in that Instagram Q&A, Lincoln may have said he doesn't believe any of the theories surrounding his white hair, but we know it's because he has trouble
trouble producing melanin. Not even you can deny science loud. Lisa will back me up on this. One guess people have had about the white hair is that Lincoln is actually an albino, which is a condition that greatly reduces the production of pigment in hair. But if this were true, Lincoln's skin tone would probably be paler than the rest of his siblings, since albinism also affects the production of pigment in the skin. And regardless, the creator of the show, Chris Savino, has allegedly debunked this theory, so either way, this possibility's out. But there are some other factors that could contribute to Lincoln's white hair, like the possibility that he has poliosis, a condition that makes itself apparent through the appearance of white patches in hair. But the problem with this and a lot of other explanations like this is that most conditions that affect hair color at a young age, like poliosis, are usually symptoms of much more serious conditions that would at best be completely noticeable in Lincoln's appearance, and at worst would cause Lincoln constant suffering and render him almost unable to function, which sucks. But that does still leave us with the most accepted theory, which is that, having ten sisters, Lincoln's hair probably went white due to stress. And while that theory seems plausible, it isn't without its issues. While there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that says stress can lead to a decrease in the production of melanin, no actual links have been found that can confirm that suspicion. That said, it's not the craziest theory. It would raise the question of why his parents don't have any gray hair despite having 11 kids, but Lincoln has less life experience, so maybe his un preparedness for his everyday life could manifest itself in his hair losing color. The stress angle is also supported since Lincoln and his parents are the only members of the Loud family to have exhausted bags under their eyes all the time. So after all of this dissection of Lincoln's hair color and whether or not it could relate to if he's adopted, we've come to the amazing revelation of... It, well... It, it, well <sighs> I don't know. Any conclusion we could draw at this point is speculation at best. But the most sensible explanation to me is that Lincoln could have inherited the white hair gene from his mother Rita since we've already seen white hair in her family in Pop Pop and the production of melanin in Lincoln's hair could have been slowed due to the amount of stress he experiences in his everyday life. As for why Rita hasn't shown any signs of gray hair, I don't know, maybe she dies it. I'd ask, but I feel like it would be rude. Okay, next, let's take a look at that Lincoln must be adopted because he's the only boy thing. One of the cool things to me about this theory is that, as unlikely as it is, a situation like the Loud House is more possible than you might think. After all, the concept of the show is semi-autobiographical. During development of the Loud House, Chris Savino borrowed a lot of elements from his own upbringing, which was in a household of five boys and five girls. Also a seemingly convenient and unlikely number don't you think? But compare that to the imbalance of the genders in the show. Clearly there must be something going on here, right? Maybe Lincoln's parents were unable to conceive a boy so they adopted him? Why else would there be so many girls and so few boys in this family? Well, the truth is that a situation like the Loud House isn't actually any more or less likely than any other family with 11 kids. Thinking that the Louds are biologically more likely to have girls because that's what we've seen is actually an example of the gambler's fallacy. This is a common flaw in how humans think. Oftentimes, we assume that the odds of random events have some sort of universal balance or imbalance to them. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'm gonna flip a coin, all right? Call it in the air. Got your guess? Okay, now what if I told you that the last nine times I flipped this coin, it came out as heads? Whether you want to admit it or not, I'll bet you that those of you who picked heads are starting to feel a bit more confident, aren't you? And those of you who picked tails are starting to wish you hadn't, right? But since you already know we're talking about the gambler's fallacy, you also know that both guesses have an equal chance of being correct. Each coin flip... I dropped the coin. Each coin flip is statistically independent from any other coin flip. And there's no truth in the belief that me flipping tails was overdue or that me flipping heads is just more likely. Getting back to our theory, the Loud family, or any family really, is just like this coin. Only the coin is chromosomes. Okay, this is where the analogy kind of falls apart. The main factor in determining the biological sex of a child is based on a pair of chromosomes that's received during fertilization. One, an X chromosome provided by the mother, and the other, either an X or Y chromosome provided by the father. This variable with the father is effectively what determines whether the child will be male or female. And for all intents and purposes, this is a 50-50 chance. So with each of the Loud children, the odds of their biological sex were the same each time. The chances of the Louds having a boy didn't increase with each girl they had. And on the other hand, more girls doesn't mean that the Louds are just biologically more likely to give birth to girls. Each pregnancy was an independent event unaffected by any of the other siblings. 
Except the twins, but you know what I mean. Let's wrap this up with Lincoln's personality. Why does he seem so different and more self-aware than his sisters? Is it because he comes from an outside environment? Probably not. You see, at 11 years old, Lincoln is the exact middle child of the family. And in the past, middle children have been most closely associated with traits relating to balance. In order to survive their unsure role in the family dynamic, middle children are said to pick up advanced skills in negotiating, peacemaking, and manipulation. Is there any particular man with a plan that's ringing any bells here? Cause I'm thinking Lincoln. But this perception of middle children is still heavily debated. And there's still a lot of uncertainty in just how birth order can help shape one's personality. But at the very least, Lincoln's personality does line up with the general public perception of middle children. And finally, part of the reason Lincoln might seem like such a more well-rounded character to us is because the show is told from his perspective, so we know more about him than anyone else. This, in turn, might give us the impression that he's more of an outsider than he really is. Don't get me wrong, he's still the butt of a lot of the jokes and pranks and teasing that goes on in the family, but not much more than any of his other sisters. And seriously, siblings fight and tease and bicker all the time. Here's my expert source on that last point. So what does everything we've discussed mean? While there might be one or two things that are a bit weird, everything from the dynamic of the Loud House, the probability of the biological sex of children, and yes, even Lincoln's white hair, would all suggest that Lincoln is allowed through and through. There's still one or two little threads that haven't been tied up, but there's very little that would make me really question Lincoln's parentage. So with that in mind, I'm going to rate the conspiracy of whether or not Lincoln Loud is adopted 1.5 sisters out of 5. Or 10, I guess. But what do you think? Do you think there might be more to the Loud House than it lets on? Which of the Loud sisters is your favorite? And if you come from a big family, do you have any tales about you or your siblings you'd like to share with us? This seems like it would be a pretty good time to hear stories from you. Be sure to sound off below with any comments, answers to these questions, or stories you'd like to share. Also, let us know if you have any conspiracies you'd like us to take a look at at a later date. Until then, be sure to like this video, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to Channel Frederator for more cartoon conspiracies. And remember, Frederator loves you.